Kentigan's Cemetery is where we mark the final resting place of Joe Cullen, Celtic's first ever goalkeeper to lift the Scottish Cup in 1892. We welcome today's speakers, Lisbon Lions, Jim Craig, John Fallon, we've also got Charlie Gallagher here today as well. These men epitomise everything Celtic is about and the club as well as the support of oh, these men and all the Lions, a huge debt of gratitude for what they've achieved at Celtic, with some applause for these London Lions. <laughs> Next up is Tony Hamilton, Chief Executive of the Celtic Foundation. Tony is a great friend of the Celtic Grave Society and he's doing an incredible job carrying on the work of Brother Walfred as we keep alive the very reason the Celtic were formed. We then ask Father Tom White, from St Mary's Carlton to conduct the blessing of the grave. Father Tom is a huge Celtic supporter and he's another who we're deeply appreciative of for us, all his help down the years. We then lay some flowers in the grave before I close the ceremony with some words of thanks and we get some pictures taken. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Cullen's arrival at Celtic was unexpected to say the least. On New Year's Day 1892, he was probably at Celtic Park as a spectator when we lost 8-0 in a friendly with Dumbarton, a record defeat that has never been beaten to this day. Worse still, reports from the match state that if the goalkeepers had been swapped around, Celtic would have won 8-0. So bad was the performance of Tom Duff and the Celtic goals. A few sherries too many in the new year was also suggested as a reason for his poor showing. His rheumatism was also given as a reason but whatever it was, Tom Duff was summarily dismissed after the match and Celtic turned to Joe Cullen, the Benburg Juniors goalkeeper, who would have been at his home in the Gorbals when Tom Maley knocked at his door. John Fallon will know that Big Jock could be a hard taskmaster with his goalkeepers, but he wasn't as ruthless as the first Celtic committee. <laughs> I wouldn't have liked to have, been, to have seen Big Jock in the dressing room after an 8-0 defeat which he put down to the demon drink and a bad goalkeeping performance. Joe Cullen's debut for Celtic came the very next day at Third Lanark and his next match was just two days later in a home win over Rangers. Joe soon settled into the Celtic team and he played in the team that beat Queen's Park 5-1 to lift the Scottish Cup for the first ever time in April 1892. He played in the Charity Cup final win over Rangers, the last competitive match at the first Celtic Park as we won the treble for the first time, just months after joining from the juniors. Joe Cullen would have had a great relationship with brother Walfred, as Joe's parents were from Leitrim, just 40 miles from Ballymote. And Joe's family took the same boat from Sligo Harbour to the Broomelaw in 1862 that brother Walfred would have taken in 1855 to his new home in Glasgow. By the end of his first season at Celtic Park, Joe Cullen was singled out for praise at the Celtic AGM for being elevated to the Celtic first team and also in not being elevated after surviving an explosion at his workplace at Higginbottom's Mill, which killed three employees. You can just imagine the press for a Celtic employee making a remark like that at an AGM. Joe soon learned to stand up for himself in the Celtic goal. He soon learned how to swear by the best of him and when Dan Doyle would berate him every time a goal was lost. Joe was in fact a much loved character who was the life and soul of the Celtic party, with a high pitched laugh that would reverberate around the dressing room. In his next two seasons he played 35 of our 36 league matches, the most of any player as we win the league title for two seasons in a row. Joe also won his second Charity Cup winners medal in 1893 with another win over Rangers in the final this time with the Celts 5-0 up by half time and no more goals were scored. By the end of the 93-94 season, Joe was replaced by Dan MacArthur, but Joe fought for his place for the next three years before he moved to Spurs and enjoyed a run to the quarter-finals of the FA Cup in 1899. After two seasons at Spurs, 
He played for Lincoln for one more year before retiring at the age of 32. Tragically, Joe died just five years later from pneumonia after watching the Celtics train, Celtic players train just days before. The same Celtic players wore black armbands at the end of that week after his death and many of the Celtic board and Celtic players turned out for his funeral. Sadly, his mother died just two days later and she is buried alongside the son who she was so proud of. Joe Cullen, Celtic's first goalkeeper at the Olympic Scottish Cup. Thank you. Please welcome the first speaker. Thank you. Reverend Father, ladies and gentlemen. No ladies. Gentlemen. All right. Okay. Some of you look like... No, maybe not. I have a personal ambition to discover that an ex-Celtic player was buried on the equator somewhere along the line. <laughs> because every day we turn up is a day like this, right? And I've deliberately left my umbrella at home because the last twice I brought it is blown inside out twice and it's now been consigned to the bin. That particular week when Joe Cullen signed or just that new year was a very uh, interesting one for Glasgow because Buffalo Bills Well Wear Circus was in town and they had arrived in the east end of one of the stations there and the steers that they had with them had run down the Gallagate before they were corralled in Duke Street. Annie Oakley was with them with a rifle and uh, Major John Burke of uh, the circus kicked off the game against uh, Dumbarton. So Joe joined just at that time. It was a tough time to be a goalkeeper. Not only did you not have a yellow jersey because that didn't come in until about 1910. You just wore the same strip as anybody else. So it's only a cap to designate you being a bit different from the rest of the players. It was a tough time because the keepers could be charged and uh, literally assaulted during the course of doing their work. Now the penalty kick had come in in 1891, the year before, but you were only given a penalty for literally handball and serious assault and keepers had to put up with a great deal. But even a few years later, I can give you an idea of what it was like because this in 1887, just after Joe had played. This directive was put up by the SFA in every dressing room in Scotland. Rough, rough play is specified in Rule 10 is tripping, ducking, hacking, jumping at a player, pushing and charging from behind. Now, I understand that that uh, particular message was first put up at Ibrox, but I think that is a scurrilous rumour and I'm not sure that there is any truth in that particular situation. But it was a difficult time. In a piece on conditions in those far off days, written by a director of Albion Rovers in a book called The Boys from the Brig, which is a fascinating, really detailed one. He points out that there were many problems for match secretaries in those days with players being unable to obtain leave from their places of employment. And there are many cases of players and even full teams finding themselves on the wrong train. There are also many episodes related in the popular press of teams taking one train while they're hampered with all the playing gear ended up in another train going the opposite direction. So it was always a fascinating time to play your football. And my favourite quote of the time comes from the Scottish umpire and it says, Take any club that has come to the forefront of football and their success can be dated from the time when they gave their attention to the distribution of the ball rather than the belated desire to cook an opponent. Now, personally speaking, I love cooking an opponent. <laughs> it is one of life's great moments, but doesn't do much for the game, I don't suppose. Uh, are we any members, are we any from the Colin family? Any no, we couldn't get any, couldn't track them down. But Joe Cullen, a, a, a very good servant to Celtic, played, as I mentioned, at a very, very difficult time. And it's great to be part of the group here today, celebrating his memory. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, John. Come on, say a few words, John, please. Reverend Father, all we're friends of the Celtic Grave Society. It's an honour to be part of your group today to recognise Joe Cullen first man to lift the Scottish Cup and it's funny how Joe got a game sitting in your, your house and somebody chaps the door and says come on what you play just shows you as Jim was saying in the old days try to get players and the poor fella played before him didn't like his name did I duff oh sorry for that pal but it's a part of the history of Celtic 
They have goalkeepers who do th great things and stupid things. And I'm one of them, I know that. <laughs> so it doesn't bother me. I'm big and ugly enough to take a uh, shape. But to be playing for Celtic is a very difficult thing. And Jim's quoting things there. The rules haven't changed, have they? <laughs> it's not the same. So there's no difference. Uh, but uh, going back to Celtic history, it's a great history we've got, a great tradition. And to be part of it, I'm sure even you as fans and the ex players that are standing here, it's an honour to be alongside great players like this. Thanks very much for inviting me, but it's a great thing to be standing inside the first goalkeeper to win the Scottish Cup. Thank you. John, is it true that you were swinging in the crossbar at the end of the 65 Scottish Cup? I tried to get round here a somersault, but the net caught me. <laughs> <laughs> first time the net caught anything. <laughs> Thanks very much. Tony. Thanks. Thanks, Brendan. Thank you. And good afternoon. I think I say this every time I'm, I'm asked to represent the club, whether it's here or anywhere else, that it, it genuinely is an honour and it's, uh, it's never anything that I'm going to take for granted. So I'm really grateful that uh, I'm, I'm afforded this opportunity today. I, I was having a look at who I'm standing with and, 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 and who I'm facing and there's a lot of people here who've probably forgotten more about this football club than I'll ever know. So it'll come as no surprise for me to tell you that this is a, a, a genuinely unique football club, a genuinely unique organisation. I think there's three aspects of that here today. The first aspect is uh, our links and our birth and our association with the church and uh, I'm delighted that we have a, 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 a good, could always be better working relationship with Father Tom and uh, and we're building upon that uh, and, and I think we're making progress and that's something that's very important to the club. This is a, not only a special football club but it's also a, a hugely significant year. I think currently we know where we are, we're enjoying every minute, even when we're not playing I think we're enjoying the football at the moment. Uh, and I think uh, it's also hugely significant uh, in as much as it's the 50th anniversary of Celtic being the first British club to win the European Cup and it genuinely is an honour for me to be stood with three of those 16 men here today. The last thing, uh, there are many things that make us unique but the last thing which is relevant today is, is something that I always mention in the four or five times that I've spoke before and that is uh, Celtic Grave Society. I think that they are uh, discreet, they are respectful, uh, it's not an ostentatious organisation, they are very courteous, they bring families together and, and they bring people together and they are fine ambassadors for Celtic Football Club. And I really love their honesty, uh, I, I must tell you. Uh, I got a text from Brendan on Wednesday night about half past ten and it said, Tony, I've asked everybody that I know, I've even asked some people that I don't know and would you come and help us out on Saturday and, and say a few words on behalf of the club so uh, I'm delighted, whether I'm the first guy or the last guy I'm absolutely delighted to be here, uh, it's been an honour uh, and I, I'm a massive fan of Celtic Grave Society so thank you. afternoon. Um, one thing myself and Tony always talk about is how the Celtic Grave Society events always wreak havoc we are here. So, <laughs> delighted to be here, um, like all the rest. Um, one thing over here is Jim asking Brendan and then the Cullen family here, and perhaps the fact that we couldn't face any strikes again at the heart of what this movement is about. It's about the, that wider family, the Celtic family spans the generations and goes beyond football and embraces both charity and faith and then the wider family of faith. When Joe was laid here to rest he'd have his family around him, he'd have had generations and siblings mourning his passing and we're privileged some hundred and 15 years or so later to be gathered round the same resting place 
gathering with the same spirit of hope and faith in the resurrection. So we gather here again to mark the resting place of our brother Joseph, to express our common faith and love for his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For Jesus says, this is the Lord's will, that I should lose nothing of all that he's given to me, and that I should raise it up in the last day. The response is, blessed is the Lord our God, blessed, blessed is the Lord, Lord our Lord God. God, Lord of all creation, praise to you, holy and living God. Blessed, blessed is the is Lord, Lord our God. God. You sanctify the homes of the living, you make holy the places of the dead. Blessed, blessed is the Lord, Lord our God. God. We praise you, our refuge and strength. We bless you, our God and Redeemer. Blessed, blessed is the Lord, Lord our God. God. Almighty and ever-living God, remember the mercy with which you graced your servant Joseph in life. May he be received into the mansions of the saints. And together with all who have gone before us in faith, may he find that resting place where God is all in all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Eternal rest, grant unto him, O Lord, and let the ritual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful depart through the mercy of God. Bless, O Lord, this grave anew. Send your holy angel to watch over it, as we remember the body of our brother Joseph, who rests in the sweet sleep and hope of peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. It would be a wee bit selfish if it's not while we're talking to the good Lord above to not ask his blessing in us, and actually those need to us. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and those dear to you, and remain with you forever. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If anyone would like to leave some flowers in the grave. Okay. I didn't know that. It was another slide number. Yeah. Aye. Because I've just traced my grand, my great great grandfather way back. I knew he came to slide my grandfather and all that. She tried to get fresh in the law. His name's actually been in the game. And he's not in the game. He's not in the game. I'd just like to thank everyone for attending and remembering Joe Cullen today. As part of the 1892 team, the Celtic Grave Society have now held ceremonies at 10 of the 12 players who won our first Scottish Cup. And we're finally going to complete this chapter of our history by holding a ceremony for Johnny Madden in Prague on the 1st of April and for James Kelly in New Stevenson on 9th of April, which is the 125th anniversary of our first ever Scottish Cup win. It's been a long road, and of the 12 players involved in the cup final, eight lay in un unmarked graves. Although we're proud to say that all are marked now, we'd like to thank everyone who has helped us with this task, and it shows that with your support, the work of the Celtic Grave Society is a long way to go yet. Thank you.
down on us and smiles on what he sees In this place called paradise United in belief Through the wind and through the rain and throughout history We won't forget our brother's dreams 